the streets here at X Games Shanghai as we welcome you to the BMX Street Final. What's good, everyone? Brandon Graham in the booth with BMX Royalty, Scotty Kramer, of course, Jack Matrani, the third member of our team, will be out on the sidelines today. Scotty, a packed house here to see some of the best in BMX put it down in Shanghai. How about this course in front of us, though, huh? I've been talking to all the riders, and they absolutely love riding this course. They wish this was a skate park that they can ride every single day. There is so much variety to it, so many different kind of rails, so many different kind of ledges and gap options. Yeah, no doubt. We've got 10 of the best in the world getting ready to hit this thing. Certainly, anytime you have a street contest, it usually begins and ends with Garrett Reynolds, who has won this event nine times, but it's been a minute. After taking silver in Minneapolis and then bronze in Sydney, but we begin with his performance last summer. Garrett is one of the best BMX riders in the world, hands down. He's been, since he was a little kid, he's been progressing and changing BMX with his own style. In Minneapolis, he messed up a couple tricks. He was so close, and Sydney was the same exact thing. And then Chad Curley, only been bested, Chad Garrett Reynolds has, by a couple of different guys. Chad, close friend, one of them. He's beaten him twice, including last summer. Chad had an amazing run in Minneapolis, and judging by practice, it's looking like it could happen again. Wow. So there you see our 10 riders from four different countries represented. Garrett Reynolds, as we said, is he no longer unbeatable? He's won this event a record nine times, but it's been a two-event hiatus for him. And Alex Dunneke, could he go back-to-back -back gold after winning in Sydney, being the first Scottish athlete to ever medal? He absolutely can. He's fully capable of it. This is catering to his style of riding, too, with the technical rails. Ten riders out here, 345 seconds runs. The best single score counts. There, a look again at this course. So many creative options, a lot of different lines we saw being put down in practice. And there's a look at our start list. Obviously, we talk about Garrett and Chad. How about one of the other riders fans should be keeping their eyes on here today? When I've been watching practice, Felix Prangenberg is absolutely firing all cylinders. His runs that he's doing back-to-back -back in practice are perfect every single time. So he's my pick to make it on the podium today. Wow. OK, putting it out there. Let's get right down to it and kick this thing off here at X Games Shanghai, the BMX Street Final. We begin with 31-year-old Nathan Williams making his seventh X Games appearance. Nathan Williams is arguably the best street rider of all time. You can see he just did a double tire ride up the rail, and I believe he did that switch footed. And we're going to have to pay a lot of attention to Nathan Williams riding today because he is riding with both feet and on both sides of the pegs, meaning that he's going to be left and forward like he is right there from that up rail to hard 180, but he'll change his feet and he will go right foot forward. Right there to downside double peg grind on the quarter pipe. He got stuck in that one and he couldn't get out of it, but let's see if he can continue the run and uh, see if he can get some practice out of this one. There's three runs today, which is great. You know, if you mess up the first run, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, and it seems to be his undoing. Again, it's so hard. Obviously, Nathan Williams, no stranger to the X Games stage, but it's never easy to be the first guy to drop in on a final. It doesn't matter if you were Dave Meir or Matt Hoffman, the legends of the sport. Being the first rider is it's never an easy thing. But look at this trick. This is a pre-setup for the next runs. That up rail to hard 180, going the hard 180 direction off of the rail, which is away from the rail, making it more difficult than spinning the inward direction. So Nathan's score coming in at a 40.66. As you said, he gets a couple more cracks, though, at this course. We move on to Huntington Beach's Dakota Roche. He's got three medals in this event, a silver and a couple of bronzes, making his 13th X Games appearance. Look at Dakota, 360 over the A-frame rail, landing flat, completely clearing it. Gap to double pig run down the second stage of the kink rail. He's got a lot of speed in his run, and he's known to have that kind of style. Ooh, that was a nice one right there. Toothpick hangover to 180 on the high part of the rail. And look at that, 180 gap to fakie half cap over the hip. Dakota's got a great run going on right now, and he's got his own yes. signature style. The way that he approaches the course is different than everybody else. And like I was saying earlier, the speed just keeps on coming, and he brings it over into the air tricks as well, doing that pocket tabletop. So he's got 10 seconds left. Let's see if he continues to end this one strong. Another hangover. 
And it's going to be the last one right here. Let's see what he goes for. Wow, big 360 oh over the dragon gap right there. There's a bank that's on the dragon's tail, and he goes over the head and down the stairs. So that was a nice, solid run for Dakota Rose. He's got to feel really good to get that one in the bag. You know, as we take another look, I'm curious for your take. As we've said, this is a different course than what we've seen at X Games as far as street is concerned. Did it, you get a sense that it took the guys a little bit longer to dial in a line for this course? In my opinion, I think it does because there's so many options out here. So once your brain gets started, you're like, man, where do I go from here? I, I have a trick on this setup, but where where's my next option? So it's definitely a little bit harder, but at the same time, it gives you more freedom. So Dakota's score coming in at a 70.33. Next to drop in, German rider Bruno Hoffman making his ninth X Games appearance. He does have a medal. It was silver, earned at X Games Barcelona back in 2013. So uh, Bruno Hoffman is a very technical rider. You can see that feeble grunt over toothpick on the opposite side of the bike. You're going to see a lot of 180 options, spinning techniques, and that's what he's known for, it's especially backwards manuals and stuff like that, too. There you go, the snaggle down the rail, the snaggle toothpick on the front peg of the bike. Popping over, I believe that was over Smith to 180. Great run so far, a lot of variety. So look at that right there, linking the line with a manual. And he used his opposite side pegs on that for both times. So the judges are looking at that difficulty because, wow, look, again, he's hopping over the rail using both sides of the pegs. And the judges want to see that kind of variety because that's the technical part of BMX. Well, he missed right there on that, on that second stage. Things went a little weird on that one. But besides that, that was a great run. What is the juxtaposition, though, from a judge's perspective to see a rider like Dakota followed up by Bruno because you saw the air and speed, and now you're seeing tech prowess? You know, in BMX, it's not like you have to live up to a standard. You know, every rider has their own you know, approach at BMX. So they're going to be judged for how they are bringing their style to the course. You know, not so much against each other because you know, everybody's original. But you're going to have guys that are going to be doing both. You're going fast, going technical. And some guys are going to be combining the two at the same time. So a 77 for Bruno Hoffman, which is nice considering he's got some room to clean up there on the back end. He's got to feel good about that one. To have that kind of fall at the end of the run, that's a tough one. We are early in run one here in the BMX Street Final. Bruno Hoffman leading the way. More from Shanghai when we return.
Lovely looks at our new host city here in Shanghai, China. It's been an amazing place to call home here this week. And this course is a thing of beauty. You see that dragon? Who's going to be a Kingslayer with Targaryen blood and jump on that thing? We'll find out here today. In the BMX Street Final, we move on in run number one. Sean Riccani making his sixth X Games appearance. He does have a medal, a silver earned in his debut in Austin in 2016. Hasn't gotten on the podium since then, though. Yeah, Sean is a very interesting rider. I've known him since he was six years old when I started giving him lessons at our skate park. Uh, but he's a Jersey ball. kid. Yes, Jersey kid for sure, but he's got such a technical ability of riding, and it comes easily for him. So if Sean can hold it together, he can definitely get in this podium today. And so far, so good. He's approaching this course in true Sean Rickandy style. Look at this gap to toothpick hangover down that whole rail. And up on top, earlier in his run, look at that. He had bar spin up the stairs. He actually used the stairs as a ramp to go up. Nice tuck no hander pocket air. And that just shows his park roots as well, you know, riding at our skate park earlier. So there goes the no-handed Vader foot jam, using his foot to hold the wheel in place right there. Linking some manual lines to the ledge. It looked like he was going to do something else there. Had a little change of heart, but you know what? This is a good first run for Sean. I think that's what he needs to uh, get the confidence to be able to come back in the next runs and try to get back on the podium again. Yeah, multi-talented. You saw a little bit of everything in this first run from Sean. Yeah, like look at this. Double tie ride across the rail. Getting both wheels on that rail. Manually to a smith, pulling up to nose wheelie to bar spin. Squeezing that all in in one run is what you need to do in an X Games street competition nowadays. But like I said earlier, look at that tuck no hand. He is so high up there. And that's awesome to see a rider be able to bring that kind of speed, bring that kind of tech in one run on the street course. And a great score for Sean, 82, putting him into first place. So obviously the score is climbing up here in run number one. We move on to a rider you talked about at the top, someone you're very excited about, perhaps riding this course as well, if not better than anyone out here. Um, I'm, I'm telling you guys, what I've seen in practice has me convinced that this guy has what it takes to get on the podium right now. He's got sixth place before. This could be his chance to get on this X Games podium. And I can tell just by the way he's approaching this course, it means a lot to him. Look at a 540 over that gap, over those rocks. 360 the backwards toothpick. Nice 540 bar spin. Like, I wasn't kidding. He's not messing around today. Look at this. He did this grind up the rail combination to a hard 360 spinning the hard way out of that rail. And look at this transfer. 360 toboggan, fakie, out of that pocket. Transfer from the red quarter to the gray one. He's got such a great run going right now. 360 whip to fakie, and he pulls that one. That's a typical trick to do in a street run right there. Switch Smith to switch 180. And what's it going to be at the end here? This is what it comes down to. Double peg grind up the rail. He's got one more. Let's see what he does. Look at that, 540 cab over that A-frame. That's, I'm not kidding around. He came here ready to get on that podium today. Let me ask you this as we take another look, Scotty. He made his X Games debut back in 2013. Then we didn't see him again at X Games till last summer. Why? That's a tough one to answer right there. I'm not too sure because he's he's got the skills. It's not like he just got better out of out of nowhere. Um, you know, it could have been one of those things where it's just a like wrong time, wrong place for qualifying. Right? Interesting. You know, yeah. so he's got his opportunity now, and I think he's going to take full advantage of it so he can get in for further X Games. There's no doubt, five riders we've seen so far here today early in run one, and that's unlike any other line we've seen so far. An 85 for Felix, putting him up into first place. Making his second 
X Games appearance, a silver medal at X Games Sydney, which was so special for the Aussie native. Here's Lewis Mills. One of my fa favorite riders right now, for sure. For reasons like that, manual gap, ice, the bar spin to ice pick right on the rail. His combination skills are amazing. He can do big tricks as well. Look at that, deep into 180 out. There's another link that he did across that, and the judges are going to reward you for that because the level of difficulty for tricks like that are huge. I know he just messed up on that switch downside whip over the hip, meaning it went the opposite direction, but he's still got his momentum carrying forward, and that's important. Heading over to the red rail, this is where he goes to speed on the up rail. Oh, there we go. Double peg grind up rail to a hard 180 bars right now. And only with five seconds left, so this is going to be crucial for the score. Nolly bar spin to manual to toothpick hangover down. Oh, he had to dab a foot the last second, but his form right now, what we just saw, his blueprint of his run, that's a run that's going to be contender for sure for the podium. So he's got two more runs. We'll see how it goes. He rides for Fiend BMX, of course, the company owned by Garrett Reynolds, and Garrett was quoted as saying, Lewis Mills is the future of BMX. If you get handpicked by Garrett to be on a team, I mean, what more of, of uh, you know, endorsement do you need, right? Thinking about that, yeah. he's the best to ever do it, you know, and hear that from Garrett Reynolds. That's huge right there. He is so close. There's a couple mess ups that he had, but once again, this is his second X Games. I no know doubt. he's coming off of a silver medal, but there's still going to be nerves there. Still just 20 years young, Lewis Mills. What a first run, 64. He can clean some things up on his second attempt. You see Devin Smiley, multi-talented, actually has a skate background. Let's hear him now in his own words. I'm Devin Smiley, and I compete in X Games BMX Street. Most of my time spent isn't usually riding contests. I am usually out riding street and filming for video parts, and if I'm not doing that, I'm at a skate park playing around on a skateboard. I got into skateboarding through BMX racing when I was about five years old. There was a little prefab park at a racetrack that I used to go to, and my mom bought me a skateboard. There's no pressure at all when I get to go out skating. Going to a skate park and not worrying about having to go out filming or anything, and not having any expectations to live up to with it, you know, it's a little bit easier to just go out and have fun. So there's been like a few times I've gone to the skate park on my bike and had skaters kind of say something to me offensively and as soon as I pull out a skateboard it's kind of like they take everything back almost and you get the same satisfaction from working hours on trying a clip so they're not that different really and it's good having a balance so I'm not burning myself out riding BMX every single day. It's amazing to see Devin Smiley be able to bridge that gap between BMX and skateboarding, and he does it so well. He has such great control of the skateboard, it's amazing. Since Devin started competing at X Games, his first one in Austin 2016, he's never finished worse than fourth, including a bronze and silver medal. He's a podium threat every time he hits the course. Well, look at that burst trick right there. That combination, crank arm slide up the rail to manual to backwards 180 grind. That's that's a crazy trick. I've seen him doing this one in practice right there. Look at the technical part of that. Doing a 180, landing fakie, and trying to 180 half cap over a rail. Look at this guy go. And it just goes to prove that's why he has such a good showing every single time. Great run so far from Devin. This could be a big score if he keeps this one going. Of course, you know, right there he had to put the foot down, a backwards manual, across that ledge, very difficult. Squeeze that one around, you can see the smile on his face, he was impressed with that one himself, so doing that half cap 540. And look at this, Barst manual, straight to a double peg grind to hard 180 out, landing perfect on that as well. That was an awesome run, like technical really trick wise. Yeah, yeah. That was huge. And this is the first perfectly. one. Look at this crank arm slide, up the rail, clearing his front wheel over that, picking up, landing in the manual, turning just enough to get the backwards pegs down the ledge. That's unbelievable right there. That should be in a video. That should not be an X Games 3 course competition because that is that difficult. But look at right here, he's doing the bar spin to manual as well. His ability to link tricks with, bar with manuals and with fakies is unlike any other rider. Seventy-three puts him just outside of podium position, but again, still early in the contest as we're wrapping up in run number one. 
So Felix Pragenberg leading the way with that 85, but some of the heavy hitters of the streets hit the course when we return. What up? I'm Chad Curley for X Games Shanghai, and I'm gonna walk you guys through the street course. So right now we're walking around the course, passing a little out ledge and a kink rail, and then we're walking over here to the A-frame rail. There's a bunch of quarters on the outside leading us around. Every time I come to X Games, it's almost like tricks are easier because they make the course <laughs> so nice. And I really like this rainbow rail with the bridge on the side. It adds that Chinese characteristics and stuff around the course. The middle is like crazy. There's like so many different options. And I've never even seen a skate park with the middle like that. This dragon feature, is, it's actually bigger than I thought. Like it didn't seem too intimidating. And when I jumped off, well, this thing's actually kind of big. So I think the fans should expect a lot of tricks. I think this course is really technical and offers a lot for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm looking forward to like figuring it all out. Love it. Chad was able to get to the course a little early, get those clips on his iPhone, man. It looks so good. And just judging by what we saw right there, we we're going to be in for it for Chad's run. He looks really, really good out there. Well, we're seven riders into our 10-man field here in the final, and it's Felix Pragenberg, the guy that you had really earmarked for this contest, leading the way. I'm, I'm telling you, I got a good feeling about this guy, and it's only going to get better as the competition goes on today. Chad Curley. One of two guys in this field to actually beat Garrett Reynolds, who's won this event nine times. He's got two gold medals to his name. Chad is a technical mastermind. Look at that oh first my. trick right there. Straight into a double bar spin. Wow, 180 with that. So hard to do in a run right there. Landing perfectly on the pedals, catching that fakie, making sure the free coaster doesn't get engaged. And here's that dragon he was so scared of. Well, you slayed that no problem no with the truck problem. driver. <laughs> Great run so far. Look at that backwards pegs to Bakey Barsman out. These tricks, the level of tricks that are in this competition today are unreal. 
Fields a hard 360, pegs to bar spin on the way out. He's at the 10 second mark, so this is going to be crucial from the end strong. Excellent tail up over. Switch tail up, landing that one perfect. If you're right here at the buzzer, you should be able to get this last one, maybe. 540 Whoa. out of the ledge. That is a huge run for Chad Curley. Chad is so cool, calm, and collected personality-wise, but when he hits the course, the, the vibe changes. I feel like everybody knows when Chad Curley hits the course. He completely unleashes. I mean, and that's a lot of these riders. A lot of these guys let their riding speak for themselves. But let's check out this replay. This first trick was insane. Bar spin to ice pick line, to manual. Landing in a nose manual, going downward on the ledge, and squeezing a bar spin out of it somehow. His technical ability and his strength to be able to balance and get that bar spin out, that is huge. Look at that feeble to hard 360. Here's that peg Huge run for Chad. This is going to be a big score. An 84 for Chad Curley. Good enough for second place. That scored about right to you? That was, uh, it was definitely right in the range, you know, of what I was expecting it to be, especially being the first runs of the day because the judges know that these guys, they're going to try to get a good run out in the first one, but the second and third is when they're going to start turning it up. Ladies and gentlemen, our defending gold medalist from X Games Sydney making his fourth X Games appearance, Alex Dunneke. So this is the battle of styles right here. It's amazing to see these guys. Ooh, right there, slight mess up. He was going for the toothpick hangover, two crank slide. A trick that he can actually do pretty commonly, but sometimes it just doesn't work out for you. There's a crooked grind using both sides of the bike at the same time to 180 on that flat rail. There's a crooked grind again and hopping out on the second stage. Again, Alex, the first Scottish athlete to ever medal at X Games. So right now, you know, things aren't going as planned. You know, and uh, he's coming off of that X Games gold. There's pressure. No matter how you want to, you know, go into this one, there you can deny it all you want. It's not like he was denying it because <laughs> we didn't really talk to him about that one, but... It, it, it's uns it doesn't even need to be spoken. It, there's pressure there. I've been in that situation before when you're coming off a gold medal performance, you're almost expecting yourself to be at that caliber again. You know, he had, a, he had multiple mess ups in this run. And sometimes it's like a domino effect. Once you mess up, it's hard to gain that focus and, and get that adrenaline going to focus that trick and continue on. And as you said, only three guys have won this event in the history of the contest. Garrett, Chad Curley, and Alex Dunneke. There's pressure that comes along with Huge being the pressure. defending title. You have to go against Garrett Reynolds. And anytime you are going against Garrett Reynolds, that is a big deal. Very big deal. Speaking of the Toms River native, Garrett Reynolds in his 15th X Games in search of that 10th Street Gold Medal. So Gary, another guy from my local skate park, he grew up riding there, he's looking amazing in practice. Look at that line right there, linking two barsman out combos with the manual. Here he goes for the tie ride, two tail, he's going regular this time. 182 backwards, crooked grind on the way out, 180 as well. Look at that downside tail of 180 to Fakie. Awesome combination there. Bringing some speed to the Dragon. Whoa, huge oh, 360 to nice. Boggin. And it's awesome to see Garrett do that one because he's had some issues in the last X Games of landing flat. And he just went and showed that huge 360 to Boggin, the biggest we've seen over the Dragon. So it's almost like something that he needed to do to show that he's back, he's ready to go. Over Smith on the opposite side. Great run for Garrett. Over Smith again, going for an ice pick on the way out. Garrett Reynolds' worst finish in the history of BMX Street at X Games, third place. That's insane to think about, but you know what? Look at these replays. This this is proof right here is why. Look at that combination, going for the toothpick hangover and the, and the bar spin out. 180 backwards crooked on the down rail, mid run. It's all big tricks. And here's that massive 360 toboggan, grabbing the seat with his hand, turning the handlebar sideways to get that real toboggan look. And he went so far, he landed hard, but he was able to ride away from it. An 87.33, Garrett Reynolds back in familiar territory as he takes over first place there on his first run. 
So run one officially in the books. Garrett Reynolds, Felix Pragenberg, and Chad Curley round out our top three, but so much more riding still to come here from X Games Shanghai. When we come back, run two. The BMX riders hit the course. More from Shanghai when we return. Sports Festival returns to the land of 10,000 lakes. Pushes the boundaries of progression. X Games Minneapolis, August 1st through 4th. Get your tickets now at xgames.com slash tickets. Just an absolutely stunning day here in Shanghai. The fans have completely packed the stands to watch the best in the business handle this street course. We welcome you to Shanghai, China for the start of run number two. Here in the BMX Street Final, Nathan Williams is sitting in 10th place, trying to dust off that 40.66 from run number one, Scotty. Well, he had the curse of going first. You know, that's always very hard to do. But look at, start things off with that up rail to hard 360 gapping all the way to flat. There is a switch-sided toothpick grind to hop over. Oh, once again, the downside grind, he had to put his foot down, but his momentum's still going. You know, you put a foot down, that's not the end of the world. You can still make some leeway with this one, so. Look at this feeble grind up. Oh, he's missing that connection. And like I was saying earlier, sometimes when things don't go as planned, it takes the wind out of your sails. That's a good trick, though, right there. Gap to over pegs to hard 180 down that rail. Oh, looks like he had a little change of heart there as well. See, it's, it's a big mental game, BMX. Right. And especially riding street. I'll go put it out there. BMX street is a very, very technical form of BMX. It's the most technical form of BMX events at X Games. So when things don't go as planned and you don't have a clear head, it's hard to go and try to grind up rails or ride across rails. I actually applaud Nathan for that. He certainly had about 12 seconds to, to ride with there and elected to just kind of come up. And he knows he's got one more 
chance, maybe clear the mind and just take out that bad muscle memory. Everybody the has their own techniques of approaching these things. So I think, uh, you know, if that's what's going to work out for him, then that's fine. But I just hope that he can get something going on in the, in the third run and we could see the true Nathan Williams. So Dakota Roche had a really solid first run, utilizing all of the obstacles, showing that staple flair of his. What can he do for an encore on run number two? I'll tell you what, I've seen him do a couple tricks in practice that we missed out on so far. So it's definitely room to be moving up. So let's see what he approaches this time. There's the toothpick hangover 180 on the second part of that rail. Heading over, this could be the trick I was talking about. Oh. So I've seen him do full cap in practice, which is great. The half cap's an awesome move, but he still has another run to up it to. So here goes to the dragon. Nice 180 to Fakie. That's a big one. Signature Dakota Rose style as well, tucking the bike up, doing the, the Euro style table. There's the fuel to manual, running out of real estate at the end there. Barely held on to that one, but moving on, no problem at all. Nice tabletop pocket air from the red quarter to the gray. 360 over the rail. Nice over Smith on the down rail. So, you know, it was not as fast paced as the first run, but that doesn't mean it was any worse than the than the first run. You know, it doesn't mean that the first run was that much better. It's a different approach at the same time. But there's the toothpick grind to uh, 180, very technical trick. And here's that signature tuck that Dakota Roche is known for in that 180. It's awesome to see. All the guys in the deck, I promise you, were psyched on that one. <laughs> nice 360. Pop over the flat rail. Dakota is such a strong rider. He's known to have one of the biggest bunny hops in BMX. And here's the technical grind. You can see that back wheel bouncing on that rail. It was barely hanging on there for a second. And that's a Smith grind. That's a very hard move to do on a down rail for sure. Love that replay. So a 71.66. Bumps up his score a little bit, but he doesn't jump up in the standings. Bruno Hoffman. Had a 77 on run number one. He sits in fifth place. Things were going great for Bruno. There we go. Feeble grind over to Toothpick on the opposite side of the pegs once again. Nice switch 360, spinning the opposite direction, which is very difficult to do. Nice snaggle tooth on the down rail. There's a can-can foot jam on the quarter pipe just to set himself up for this one, which is, ooh, he hangs onto that one. That was an over Smith grind to 180, but at the last second, his back peg landed in a double peg. Still made it work, very difficult. Over opposite pegs to 180 on the down rail. Nolly to pegs to over toothpick. I, it's crazy for me to keep up with these tricks because they are so difficult. There's so much going on in modern day street riding. But just the fact that these guys are landing these tricks back and forth right there at 540 over that, over that gap, that was so close. He was right there at the buzzer as well. That would have been a nice score if he hung on to that one. Bruno from Frankfurt, Germany, of course, has the designation of being the first ever international rider to medal in this discipline when he took a silver in Barcelona back in 2013. So here's that 540 that went wrong. It looked like it was going to work. So right there at the end, the bike kind of chattered a little bit, and he was forced to step off the side. So it's always rough to see when it's at the end of the run, and then you, and you see a mess up, and especially on something that was so close to being pulled. It's always a, it's always a tough one. I've been in that position before. It's, it's, it's terrible. So a 77.66, slight increase on the score, but isn't able to get himself into the podium conversation. Will that change for him on run number three? We're just getting started here at X Games Shanghai. More from the street course after this.
It isn't just about the contest here at X Games Shanghai. The festival area is so much fun. I got a chance to uh, cruise around there a little bit this morning. Fans out there having a really good time. Music obviously was on display last night. You've been able to partake at all, Scotty? I haven't gone over there yet, but I heard there's go-karts. We just got the call that there are go-karts. As soon as this broadcast finishes, or maybe even before, depending <laughs> on the outcome, we might bounce over there for a little head-to-head -head match up. We're in the middle of run two here, the BMX Street Final at X Games Shanghai. Garrett Reynolds leading the way with that 87.33. But here's Sean Rakani. He's sitting just outside of the podium with fourth place in that 82 from run one. Sean had a great run. Look at that combination right there. Barspin out of the manual to Smith Grind to Nose Manual to Barspin. That's a huge trick. There's a truck driver out of the switch people as well. This is awesome so far. This is up in the ante from the first run. If Sean can keep this one going, this is going to be a big score. Barsman to pegs to hard 180. So many combinations right now. And when you're combining a barsman in and out of tricks, that is what the judges want to see because these are smaller rails. It's technical. That's what the judges are looking for. That's what's going to, going to excel. Barsman to manual, heading over to the rail to a crooked grind to 180 out. This is huge right here. We're at the end of the run. What's Sean going to finish with? Double peg grind to 180 bars for now. This one. I'm going to tell you, that was a very, very technical run right there. Starting things off the way he did with the bang, that was huge. And carrying that momentum all the way through. And here's the trick I was talking about. Double tire ride on the round rail getting into a manual, bar spinning into a smith grind, popping up into the nose, and bar spinning out. He has zero time right there to get the bars around. But once again, a bar spin, two pegs to hard 180 out. He had a bar spin combination on pretty much everything, and the judges are going to see that. They are going to appreciate that skill level. Here's that manual. So hard to do at the end of the run to combine a trick. Crooked grind to 180 out. That's an opposite 180. It's the easy way. But huge, huge run right there for Sean. He's got to feel great about that one. 81.33 for Rakani. Interesting. So he'll hold on to his run one score of 82. So we move on to Felix Pragenberg, who was leading this thing. I'm seeing you shrug your shoulders, but you, you expect probably a higher score on that one. <laughs> I did. I mean, it was, it was better than the first run. Interesting. It, was, it, was, it looked like it from my eyes, and I'm glad to hear you validate that as well. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little confused. Uh, you know, I, maybe the judges caught something that he did re re repetition, or there was something. I, I, I truly don't know. So we've turned our attention back to Pragenberg, who's sitting in silver medal position with such a proper 85 on his first attempt. Oh, the 720 whoa, to fake whoa. on the whoa, quarter whoa. pipe. That does not belong in PFX Street, but it's awesome that he's bringing that here. This run is strong right now. Look at that hard 360, the hard truck driver out of the pegs. There's a 360, pocket air to fakey. So much speed, so much power. 540 on the oh dragon. My. Oh, oh my. man. I, listen, I saw him do the 540 down the stairs yesterday, and we were all talking. Is anybody going to 540 the dragon? Well, right there, Felix going for it. Man, if he would have landed that one, 
and continued on, we would have definitely seen a change in the leaderboard. We've got to see that on his third and final run. Man, that was unbelievable. Please feel that it. That 40 is scary. That is absolutely terrifying, especially to do towards a three-quarter part of your run. When you're, just to show you, look how tired he is. He didn't even have enough energy to get up the quarter pipe and to try a 540 on that. But here's a 720 to Fakie. Two full rotations, landing Fakie, mid-run, the pegs up that rail, which is a very steep rail, to full truck driver out. And look, at he almost landed in the center circle. And here's the 540. Look, everything was looking good, but he had too much weight on the back end of the bike, and he just could not hold on. You want to make sure your weight is perfectly balanced, that you land on both wheels simultaneously so you can be controlled and ride away from that one. Well, Felix Pregenberg is not content with sitting in that silver medal spot. He wants to push Garrett Reynolds here today. I'm telling you, I, I had a great feeling about this guy, and he's shown us run after run that he belongs here, and he is ready to do what it takes to get the gold. Lewis Mills earned a silver medal at X Games City. Right now, he's in eighth place. So Lewis has the ability to upset this leaderboard easily. So look at that. Up pegs to manual to bar spin to ice pick grind. Very technical trick. Pop it up with a toothpick hangover grind to manual as well. To bar spin the feeble to hard 180. Wow, these are like video game style tricks that these guys are doing consistently. He's landing the tail. That's where things went wrong in the last run. So. Getting that momentum back on his uh, favors. Look at that. Fakey, full truck driver to Fakey again over the A-frame. Awesome run so far for Lewis Mills. Pegs up the rail to hard 180. Continuing on, he's got seven seconds left, so this is crucial. We get something huge to leave a great impression on the judges. Nolly up to Barstow. And there's dull peg to hard 180. So listen, that was a full pull, but from my eye right here, there was a couple things that he messed up on. I know he's not happy about right there. Because in the first round, I know he did the bar spin nolly to manual. I think that's what he was going for, but you know, he had to settle to land both tires. But there was no mess ups in the run, which is great for him. So here's that combo right there, that toothpick hangover grind to manual, to bar spin, to feeble grind, to hard 180 out. And like I say, it's a hard 180 because he's pulling away from the ledge. He's not spinning into it. Now here's that full cap truck driver landing fakey once again on the down part of the rail. And the guys are able and the guys are able to do this because they have the free coaster, which gives them the ability to land fakey like that and not have to pedal backwards. So majority of the guys, I think almost every rider today is riding the free coaster. I'm pretty sure everybody is. And uh, you kind of have to at this point to keep up with the progression. It's hard to do when you pedal back. Now Lewis Mills betters his score on run two, but he's unable to move up in the standings. Devin Smiley sitting in sixth place, trying to replace that 73 from his first run. Devin Smiley, same kind of setup, crank arm grind up to manual to 180 pegs to inward 180 out. It's amazing that he's starting his run off back to back with that same powerful trick. There's the gr over to grind to pegs hard 180. Whoa! Whoa. He second guess himself. He was going to take his foot off and put it down. And he did two, like this one, one flare, but he pulled it. He actually rode away from that. 180 on the down part. Once again, using that free coaster to his advantage right there. There's that 180 backlash across that ledge. Huge trick. Skinny ledge. It's hard to do. There's that 540 over that. A-frame coming over Fakey. He's at the end of his run. Let's see what he's got. That bars when he couldn't get the manual. Man, he was so close to being completely perfect for what he wanted. But listen, there was no solid mess up on that one. His only mess up was when he took his foot off, but he did put it back on. He was able to ride away from that one and that manual at the end, but he was still continu he still continued on and he did finish the run. So here's that crank arm grind. Look, he had to clear his front wheel over that flat rail to get in his manual, and he has to swerve away from the uh, ledge to be able to get the carb to it and then get back over to it. Such a technical trick. The fact that he landed at both times is unreal. But look at this, over grind to hard 180 to fakey using his opposite pegs, jumping on, popping over, about to put his foot down, but he put it back on, which is insane. He had a feeling that his lean was off. He was going to have to put his foot down to save himself, but at the last second, he realized he was going to be able to ride away from it. A 74.66 for Devin Smiley. He's never finished worse than fourth in this contest, but he has his work cut out for him as he's sitting in sixth place. Garrett Reynolds, our current leader, hits the course for his second attempt when we return.
Welcome back to X Games Shanghai. We're wrapping up run number two here in the BMX Street Final. Garrett Reynolds leading the way. He's moments away from hitting the course for his second attempt. Chad Curley is sitting in that bronze medal spot right now. He's about to kick things off. And in between the two, Felix Pragenberg, a guy who you really had your eyes on all week long at practice, and that's paying dividends right now, my friend. He's in second place right now, but he has his eyes on that top. And if we see his run and he lands that 540 over the Dragon, he has what it takes to upset the leaderboard. He really does. So Chad Curley. Sitting in third place. He's got three medals in this event. He, of course, won it in Minneapolis last summer. He's a point behind Pragenberg for silver medal spot. What can he do on his second run? That was a cool start right there. I like the bar spin over the rail, manual, and then bar spinning over the rail the other way. Look at this nose main. Oh, he had to let it go right there. And that's a hard trick to do in a street competition because it's very unpredictable. Nice 540 over the A-frame, getting his groove back. That's what he's going to need to do. He's going to really have to catch up on this one. Tail whip oh! over the dragon. That was huge right there. The first rider we've seen to do that tail whip gap. That's a big one. Very unpredictable. Oh, misses hand on the bar spin as well. So this is going to be a throwaway run. But it builds the suspense to go into the third because it's all going to come down on that one. And that's uh, those are the crucial crunch time moments. I've been there before personally where you have to step up. you got to get in that state of mind on that deck. And it's the worst thing when you have to wait for every rider to go and you know it's all coming down to your next run right there. And it's got to be tough for Chad. Obviously, he's very good friends with Garrett Reynolds and what a rivalry they've had over their X Games careers on the street course. But you don't want to leave an opening for Garrett Reynolds. Already in the lead, you want to put your best foot forward every run. Obviously, it's a three-run format, so he's still got that last chance. But you know Chad Curley might feel like a bit of a wasted opportunity. You're right about that. And uh, it just goes to show Minneapolis. I mean, Garrett was upset by Chad Curley early on. So Garrett had to pick up and catch up again. Right. And that's where we saw Garrett fall short on that one. So once Garrett's comfortable at the top, he's kind of used to being in that position. So uh, you want to definitely come out and, yeah. and put him in his place in a way. No doubt. Alex Dunnicky, our gold medalist from X Games Sydney, trying to put a run together here. It fell apart early for him in run one. So Alex Dunnicky, oh, the same exact trick that he messed up on. It was deja vu exactly. That toothpick hangover, two crank arm slide. He's ran out, but changed things up on that one. He's doing the 180 bars for now, the cricket grind. And like I said earlier, it's so hard to be able to focus and keep it going. But that was pretty cool. That was a cricket grind predator grind down the rail. So meaning that he did a cricket grind on both sides of his bikes, hopped over. So very technical. And he has the tricks to do this. Again, he definitely does. But his riding style, 
It's a very technical style. The tricks that he chooses are different than everybody out there. So the stuff that he does is going to be more unpredictable for landings. But he's so talented, such a great rider. And you know what? He, once again, I'm going to say it. He has his third run to be able to step things up. You know, you can almost look at these as practice runs because the third one is what's crucial. Those are what the judges are going to reward you the best on. Right here, this is where things went wrong. So there's the uh, hangover tooth of grind, landing on that crank arm, sliding across, just leaning a little bit too far back, having to step off the bike again. But here's that predator crook grind, switching over to another crooked grind on the way down, which is really cool to see. You don't see too many riders doing that one. And here's a manual combination, landing in the crooked grind, 2180 out. So like I said earlier, he's got the tricks, he has the skill. His video parts are mind-blowing. His innovation, how far he's pushed BMX, is absolutely unreal. And the fact that he can bring that to the competition, like he did in Sydney, it can happen again. So Garrett Reynolds, our current leader, as you said before, when he gets first place early in a contest, he's got a kung fu grip on that thing. He usually does not let it go. And just like that, he has the ability to step things up and try things that we wouldn't normally see. Switch people up to 540, landing that one. Had to get a small hop, but that was almost picture perfect. Bar spin to double tie ride, the bar spin out. 180 backwards, crook down the rail. Garrett feels good right now. This is a great day for him. There you go, the half cab, tail whip over the A-frame. And it's crazy to say it, but we can have a step up in the run right now. The truck driver for Garrett over the dragon gap. And the toboggan last time, so switching things up. Pegs up the switch bar. The opposite direction. Toothpick hangover 180 on the flat rail. And here we are at the end of the run. Over Smith, but landing in the double pegs on the opposite side. But listen, I'm not sure how they're going to judge this one. But we did see an increase in the trick difficulty of Garrett's run. They really liked what they saw at run number one. So it was more of the same. It really was. There was a, the, the first trick right here that we're going to see. This is the switch feeble to 540 landing. He had to do a one correction hop. But in a competition, you know, that's okay. Video part, you would do it again. But there we go. Bar spin and landing both tires on a round rail. Doing a bar spin out as well. Straight into a 180 backwards crook down the rail. This is the Garrett Reynolds that we're, you know, accustomed to seeing, used to seeing at X Games for so many years now. He's riding on fire, and that's not what these competitors want to see today, that is for sure. In the hunt for his 10th street gold medal. He can only go up from here, and he does just that a point better. 88.33, Garrett Reynolds giving himself even more breathing room from the field. Like I said, he, he, he upped the ante on that one. Those tricks are going to get rewarded. Those difficult ones like the bar spin in and out of the double tire ride, the 540 out of that ledge. My goodness, so Garrett Reynolds leading the way. There you see a look at the Moto course. We're going to get ready in just a little bit for that Moto X Best Whip contest. Let's check in with Thomas Pages and Jacko Strong to give us a preview. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Pages, and we're here at the Ace Game in China. And we are about to show you a Best Whip session with my friend Jacko Strong. Being a motorcycle rider, it doesn't matter if you're freestyle, motocross, supercross, the roots of everything come back to just having fun and doing whips on dirt bike. You know, in freestyle model, we're able now to do many tricks. Like, you can be able to do flips, anything, but you're never gonna be a good freestyle guy if you're not able to do a big, big whip. You can have any trick you want in the world, but at the end of the day, style comes down to how you whip. Insane, getting the best angles on their iPhone out there today. I cannot wait to watch those guys put it down in just a little bit. But of course, we've got to figure out who's going to win the hardware out here in BMX Street. 
Garrett Reynolds. Will he walk away with that 10th Street gold or will Chad Curley try and take it from him? More from Shanghai after this. Welcome back to Shanghai, China, a city that boasts over 26 million people. But today, it's home to 10 of the best BMX riders on the planet. As we welcome you back to the BMX Street Final, we're two runs into our three-run format. It's third and final run time. And if this field isn't careful, it's going to quickly become the Garrett Reynolds Invitational. Who is going to come up and try and grab this gold medal away from Garrett? Well, Felix Prankenberg, we've been talking about him all show so far. He has what it takes. He's got the biggest trick over the dragon so far. If he brings that one back in and he pulls that one, he can definitely upset the leaderboard. Nathan Williams needs to put together a run. Simple as that. He's sitting with a 48.66 in 10th place right now. Starting things off again with that 360 out of the up rail the hard way. Oh, man, he got stuck on the hangover, popping over the rail. It's a very hard trick to do with speed on that rail. Look at that. He went right foot forward. And I really wanted to showcase Nathan's ability to go both ways, and that was a perfect opportunity. He was going right foot forward to switch things up. But once again, you know, it, it, the, the trick got stopped early on in the run. When you have a mess up like that, it's crucial on you. It starts messing with your head, but... I would like Nathan Williams to show everybody the tricks that he can do right now. I'd like him to continue on and hopefully do something to let everybody know that Nathan Williams is one of the best in the world. Like, he really is. He's absolutely amazing. You know, that's a really good point, Scotty, because it's how often do you get to ride on a world-class course like this? 
certainly you can probably count it on one hand when it comes to the X game. So if it's not the run or if it's not the day you're looking for, sometimes it's just good to be selfish and go, hey, I'm gonna put my skills on display. It is, and you know what? All the BMX fans around the world that are watching this, they appreciate seeing Nathan Williams on his bike, even if he's not on that podium, if he's not at the top there, if he's not getting his full run, but just putting that signature style, his certain tricks back on the course, that's what they want to see. That means the world to them. Dakota Roche sitting in seventh place. Dakota starting things off. Big 360 over the A-frame rail once again. Dakota's been bringing a lot of speed into it. Oh, no. Gap to Ice Pick Ryan looping out, meaning the bike went out from underneath him and he had to fall off the back of it. But good thing is he was able to save himself. He popped his feet off, he landed on on his feet, trusted his vans right there, and he was able to ride away from that one. You know, so but once again, I know I know the wind's been taken out of his sails, but that was a big gap right there. He's trying to go from the lower part to the higher part of the rail. So let's see if he tries that one again. This is another opportunity where the BMX fans are watching. Right. They want to see Dakota do what Dakota does. So popping up to Pegs. Oh, oh, trying to transfer over to that down part would have been so awesome. And that's a setup right there that you will never see usually at X Games. That's something you will, you know, randomly be driving, riding around a city in uh, in China, and you'll be like, wow, this is awesome. I want to jump up and grind it. So that was Dakota Roche right there. So here's what went wrong right here. This is the gap to ice pick grind. The wheels came out from underneath him. That's called looping out, but he was able to save himself. So right here, hopping up, this is where it didn't work for him. See, he uh, didn't have enough pop out of that bank. And you know, when the guys designed the setup, they were trying to incorporate that small little gap that was behind them. They didn't think somebody was going to go and grind the top bar, but Dakota Roche is a different kind of BMX rider. Yeah, no doubt. Dakota's day is done. We do want to congratulate the longtime X Game competitor, though. He is getting married in September in Joshua Tree. That's amazing. Dakota's a great guy, one of my favorite people in BMX. So here's Bruno Hoffman. Right now he's sitting in fifth place. Has looked good today. We loved that first run from Bruno. Can he do anything to get his name into that podium conversation? So Bruno has had mess ups at the end of his run. If he gets a full pull, he can definitely jump into podium position. And so far, so good. There's the over pegs on the switch side, the 2180 out. Very technical rider. We were talking about that earlier in the show. There's an over toothpick grind to manual to over switch peg to so 180 out. Like it's it's unbelievable. Me, me commentating here and saying all the tricks that these guys are doing. It's so hard to keep up with it and so technical. So look at that. There's a crooked grind up that rail to 180 as well. Because at the end of his run, it's crucial to get something big. The 540. This time Whoa, landing it right away it from that one. Being able to command the bike underneath him, right away from it, he's got to feel good about that one. Saving his best for last, Bruno Hoffman. His best run score coming in at that 77.66 on his first attempt, but this was certainly his best of the day, Yeah, Scott. we'll check out the replays right here. Like I was saying, the over switch pegs to 180, and here's that technical line, the over two pick line, landing in the manual, holding the bike, bouncing it over, gapping to the other side pegs to 180 out. It's so technical to do. So hard to do in a competition run. And here's a 540 that he landed this run, but he fell on in the second run. So just to be able to get that, whether he makes it on the podium or not, he feels good about himself because he showed up, he showed everybody what it takes. Yeah. His highest score of the day is 79.33. He will not be able to move up in the standings, but what a statement. Great way to end your day here at X Games Shanghai. Chad Curley is holding on to that bronze medal position at 84. Sean Rakani is right behind him with an 82. What can Sean do here to enter that position and maybe get on the podium? I really like Sean's second run. So if he does more of the same and adds a little bit more, it could be great. Right there, same combination that I absolutely loved in the second run. So technical. The truck driver added the feeble grind. There's the 2 3 360 over the rail. And like, I love the variety. I love the momentum that he's bringing to it. And it's his signature style as well. Bar spin to pegs to hard 180 once again. It's amazing that he's got this consistency. Once again, bar spin riding up a stair set. Like something that we didn't even think was possible years ago. So here's Sean coming over to the middle set. This is where a lot of the biggest tricks are happening. Bar spin to manual, coming to the down rail. 
Brown looks like a crooked ground from oh, this angle. But no, he had to fall off the side of the bike on the rollout. He swatted that one away. That's a rough one right there because he knows that second run was great. He knew he had to bring something huge to be able to get into that podium position. Look at this one. This is the first one I absolutely love, though. Tire ride to manual. He does the bar spin into the Smith grind and then pops up the nose and spins the bars out at the last second. That is a huge trick to be doing on that ledge. So technical. One of the best of the day on that ledge for sure. Well, he was on one, unfortunately unable to fulfill it on that final trick. And he will hold on to his run two score and just miss out on the top three. Okay, we turn our attention now to Felix Pragenberg. He's got that 85. He's sitting in second place. Garrett Reynolds upped his score on run number two. Felix is awesome. You've been saying it all day long. What's he got Guys, for his final run? Guys, this is the run right here. This is huge for him. It's starting off so well. 720 to Fakie. It's such a big trick. Let's see if he can command this one. Keep it going. Pegs up the rail to... Oh, oh no. no! That is absolutely not what we needed to upset this podium right now. He had to bring the speed into that up rail. That was... It had to happen because he was eyeing up to do that that truck driver out, I believe, that he did earlier. And to, to get that kind of speed and get that kind of trick, you have to go huge. But you know what? He's still putting on the show for the Chinese crowd out here. And you can hear them in the background going crazy for everything that he's doing. When he did that flare, they absolutely loved it. It's a shame to see Felix not be able to do exactly what he wanted to. But at the same time, let's look at the leaderboard. He's in second place. Unreal. So here's the replays. This is a 720 to fakie, carving, spinning, landing, holding on, using that free coaster, perfect rollout. Things were going so great, but this is where it went wrong. He missed the pop. The bike got away from him. You can see he was setting up to throw that bar spin, but it just, sometimes it doesn't work out. And when you're riding something like BMX Street and it's as technical as it is to do tricks on a rail, you know, just think about that. You're getting four and a half inch pegs to go on a rail at full speed and then trying to spin a 360 and throw the bar spins off same time that's crazy i'll tell you what felix made more than a few fans out here in shanghai the roars of the crowd were about as loud as it was for anyone when he took the course garrett reynolds our current leader can he earn a 10th career street gold medal we'll find out after this Thank you. 
Welcome back to X Games Shanghai. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Brandon Graham alongside the legend Scotty Kramer in the booth. Garrett Reynolds, the most dominant man in the history of this contest, is sitting in the top spot. But who can catch him? Chad Curley is in bronze medal position right now. Chad Curley has the tricks to do it. He was showing a lot of technical tricks in his run, but sometimes that comes back to bite you because it's hard to land these tricks, but you will get heavily rewarded if you do land these tricks by the judges. In front of him, Felix Pregenberg. Now his day is done. He just had his third and final attempt. He was unable to move the needle, but an impressive showing nonetheless. Absolutely amazing riding for Felix Pregenberg today. He was so close to getting his dream run, but he's in second place behind the greatest in BMX Street so far, Garrett Reynolds. Garrett so Reynolds in search of that 10th career X Games gold medal in this discipline. Garrett had an amazing run today, very impressive, seeing these huge tricks like this truck driver over the dragon, and he's landing everything absolutely perfect. Sometimes Garrett Reynolds is just on a mission, and he cannot be deterred. Only Dave Mira and Jamie Bestwick at 14 apiece have more gold medals than Garrett Reynolds. There you see a look at the standings late in run number three. We move on now to Lewis Mills. This is his final attempt. He's sitting in eighth place. Lewis Mills has what it takes. We saw him second. He gets second place to sit. You know, he beat Garrett Reynolds already. He can get up there. He's just got to get the tricks done. So look at that right there. Slight mess up already. That's not what you want to start your run off with. But, like I said, it's a slight mess up. It wasn't a crash. He just had to put the wheel down on a manual. Look at that. Bar spin to backwards crooked grind to 180 out. Garrett did that in his run minus the bar spin. So that just goes to show he does have the big tricks to compete with Garrett. Moving on to the A-frame, there is the truck full cap over the A-frame, landing fakey, going up fakey, absolutely amazing so far. Let's see if Lewis has what it takes on this up rail, and we go hard 360 on the up rail, and this is going towards the end of the run, this is crucial, the judges want to see you end strong. Bringing a lot of speed, going for the 180 bars for the oh dragon, no! but bouncing on the rollout, not being able to command the bike down. And I can't stress it enough, when you're doing your biggest trick, especially a trick like that, when you're landing with that kind of impact at the end of your 45 second run, you just use all your muscles to do your whole entire run. Everything is fatigued. But let's check out this replay. Bar spins a backwards crook to 180 out. That was the trick I was talking about earlier. Garrett did that in his run, but he didn't do the bar spin. So he had what it took to be up there. Nice up rail to hard 360 onto the top deck. And this is where things went wrong. He did the bars from 180. Everything looks great. Landy, he compacted. You could see his body weight was backwards, but he tried to do his best to be able to land it, but he was so glued to the ground. He was All right that force. There, Scotty. That was rough. So not Lewis's Mills Whoa. Day, but remember, he rides for Fiend BMX, Garrett Reynolds' company. He's already been earmarked by Garrett as the future of BMX. Lewis Mills is going to be a force on this stage for years to come. We now turn our attention to Devin Smiley. He's sitting in sixth place, has ridden well here today, but if he wants to get into podium position, he would need at least an 84. He's gonna need a perfect run. And here's that insane trick. This is one of the most technical tricks we've seen today. Backwards feeble to backwards manual down the ledge. Are you kidding me? That was an up from the other runs, and that was a huge trick. Over pegs to fakie. Oh, he, oh my, listen. How did he ride I, away? I, listen, what we just saw right there was magic. I thought the trick was over, but he upped the ante and he made something insane out of it with that backwards fakie toothpick grind on the opposite side to pop over fakie. This is an insane run. 180 backlash across that skinny ledge so far. He's got 10 seconds left and he is on a serious run right now. There's the five cap over the A-frame. This is gonna be the last trick, Brandon. This is going to be huge. Oh, oh no, not the kid flip. Devin! I can't describe to you how crazy that run was going. If he landed that last trick, oh, this is killing me right now watching this because we were on the verge of seeing magic right there. There was tricks that had me on the edge of my seat throughout that whole entire run. Here's what we're talking about. That crank arm side up the rail, landing in the manual. But watch when he gets on the ledge. Lance Feeble jumps to manual and goes down the ledge. That's crazy. 
absolutely insane. And this is this is how does he do this? I'm excited to watch this in slow mo. Hops up. I think he wanted to go to double peg, but he was running out of rail. If he would have landed on his pegs on the rail, he would have missed it with his back peg. So he improvised. He landed on the toothpick and he went to fakie. And 81.33, so even with the step off there on the final trick, he improves his score, but isn't, isn't able to get into podium position. Wow, that just goes to show he was flying right there. If he would've got that last trick, that would've been an absolutely huge score. There you see our current leader, Garrett Reynolds. He waits on Chad Curley. He's sitting in bronze medal position. He has beaten Garrett twice before, as recently as last summer at X Games Minneapolis, where he took gold. Here's Chad Curley's last chance to stay claim to the top spot. So far, so good, Brandon. Everything is looking perfect. I like how he did that backwards crooked grind to Barsman. Right there, slight mess up, but let's see if he can continue on. Nice bar from 180 out of the feeble. He wanted to land in that manual. That's the mess up I was talking about. Nice 540 over the A-frame. He's got the tricks right now. It's not too far out. He's got time to get these tricks going as well. Here we go onto the dragon. He's got the tail whip. Landing oh smooth, holding the bike, riding away from it in control. 180 to pegs on the ledge. He didn't throw the bar spin like he did the last run. We're on the last trick though. This is huge. 540 out of the ledge. Tail whip into the bank. We're gonna get one last trick right here. Truck to Fakie, and that's gonna be the buzzer. So that's gonna be all she wrote for Chad Curley. Was it enough? Chad Curley sitting in bronze medal position. This one for the fans here at Shanghai after the buzzer, but we take another look at his final attempt. So right here is the bar swim 180 out of the down ledge, out of the feeble. Great, great combination. And uh, this was cool. Nice tail whip gap. This time he lands completely in control, feet perfectly on the pedals. He was able to command the bike down, landed without squatting at all. Here's the 540 off of the ledge, riding straight up it. And I like how he went into the backwards crooked grind. Oh, that was not this one. Sorry, that was the that was on the earlier on. That was the tail whip dropping. But in the same situation, he did that backwards crooked grind to 180 bar, which is huge. And 81.33, so no, Chad Curley will stay in third place. Garrett Reynolds sits there wondering, will it be another gold medal? There's one rider left standing in his way, and he just so happens to be our gold medalist from X Games Sydney, Alex Dunneke. So far, it has not been his day. He struggled staying on his bike. He's sitting in ninth place. He can change all that right here, right now. This is the moment that he needs. So far, so good. It looks like he's gonna do the same kind of run that he's been doing. Now, this next trick is the one that's been messing him up. If he can get past this, this is what he needs. The crank arm popping over this time. This is great. This is what he needs to be able to get this gold medal opportunity. Here's the crooked grind, 180 on the way out. So far, the best we've seen of him today, Scott. Yes, he's landing everything. You know, he's already been out of the competition at this point in his run for the last two. So, so far, so good. But he's going to need some huge tricks right now. There's an ice pick grind up. Oh, no, the 180 on the way out. Having the fall off the side of the bike right there. Man, that was so close to getting something magical. Alex Dunneke was putting this line together, and unfortunately, he cannot finish. And with that, Garrett Reynolds is back on top. I feel like we've been here before. I feel like we've seen this. Deja vu all over again. Garrett Reynolds took over first place on his first run, and he never looked back on his way to his 10th street gold medal. He's the greatest of all time, Brandon. When it comes to BMX Street and competition, Garrett is at the top, and it just goes to show, here is a victory lap. But if I know Garrett Reynolds, if I know Garrett Reynolds like I know Garrett Reynolds, I think we're gonna see something for the fans. He's gonna do something big, he's gonna do something fun. He's gonna push the envelope. Like we talked about earlier, he knows everybody's watching. He knows the BMX fans around the world. So start things off with the switch truck driver. That's an opposite 360 and an opposite bar spin. Look at this, bar spin the manual on the quarter pipe to 180 what? downside tail whip over the A-frame. Just when we thought, we've seen it all. Nice truck driver oh, over yes. the dragon. 
oh, this is what we want to see right here, a victory lap, but he's going to up the ante. He will get a better score if he keeps this going and showing so far. That was unbelievable. That first line that he did with the bars and the manual, that's why Garrett Reynolds is the best at, at what he does. You're a wizard, Garrett. Oh, and he like lets these 10 seconds expire because he knows he doesn't need to do anything else. This was insane. I, I really wish we could see a replay just to show you guys how technical that first trick was right there. But Garrett Reynolds, oh my goodness, his 10th gold medal. This is crazy. I want to wow. see that bar spin to manual so bad because that is something that you would see in a video part. So this is his 10th gold medal in this discipline. He also has a gold medal in Real BMX, our video contest. So that's 11 total. That ties him now for fifth most in X Games history with Travis Pastrana. Look at that trick right there. Going manual up the A-frame, kicking the tail up late. It was so far away from him, but somehow, because he's Garrett Reynolds, it managed to get back underneath him and rode away. That's crazy. This is and let's not forget, Garrett Reynolds went all of 2018 without an X Games gold medal. That was the longest hiatus he's ever had. Poor guy, huh? <laughs> Two <laughs> contests back on top. He said, I didn't like the way that felt. <laughs> Look so at him. He get comes all the way to Shanghai to get back into first place. Felix Pregenberg taking silver and Chad Curley rounding out our podium with bronze. Let's head down to Jack Mitrani, who's with Garrett. Congratulations, Garrett. Your 10th gold medal in the discipline. How big is this medal for you? Uh, this means a lot, man. I like almost missed my flight here. Came late, was kind of stressing it, and uh, I was like, I'm just gonna go out and have fun. That's what it's all about, and I'm just psyched it worked out. And your podium perfect. This is the 13th medal you have in BMX Street. How have you been able to be so consistent? I don't know, I just love riding, so I do it all the time. So I think I, I just pick tricks I know how to do when I ride contests, you know? And you finally got gold again after this two years. How big is this moment? This is awesome, man. It's been a while. And so why are you sitting down right now? My legs started cramping up. I think I'm a little dehydrated. All right, well, we'll let you go get some water. Congratulations again, Garrett Reynolds. Cool as the other side of the pillow, Garrett Reynolds just makes it look effortless, Scotty. It's absolutely amazing seeing Garrett Reynolds ride this street competition. Look at this run right here. 540s out of feeble grinds up ledges. It's just magic, it really is. And like I've been saying earlier, I've been riding with him since he started out when he came to my skate park in the 2000 range. And just seeing him be at the top is so unbelievable. And just continually progressing the sport of BMX nonstop. It's, it's truly, it, it's, it's an honor, honestly it is. And you heard him say it there to our own Jack Matrani, he almost missed the flight. That would have been a bummer. Can you imagine that one? That would change absolutely everything this weekend for BMX Street. But once again, Garrett's doing what he does best. We talked about it before in Minneapolis, Chad Curley was able to grab the lead early and he forced Garrett to try and take it from him, which he was unable to do so. Instead, a little bit of a role reversal, Garrett took the lead on his first run and he never looked back. And I think that's crucial. I think uh, I think that plays a lot into it because Garrett has been so steadily at the top for so long. He's used to being in that position. He's got no pressure on him at all. But you know what? When we saw Chad get into the first place position and he had to work for it, it changed. And there you see our final results. Garrett Reynolds, Felix Pregenberg, and Chad Curley round out our podium out here today at X Games Shanghai. And how about Felix Prangenberg? Let's show him some love getting that silver medal. You had pegged him as a favorite all week long. I called I called him on the podium. I knew he was going to get there, but where was he going to land? Second behind the greatest of all time? <laughs> that is not, that's nothing not to be proud about right there. Well, an epic contest here today at the BMX Street Final, but it really was all about Garrett Reynolds with a gold medal here today. Only four guys have more gold than him. He is just continuing to rewrite the record books. Congratulations to Garrett Reynolds for Jack Mitrani, Scotty Kramer. I'm Brandon Graham. Thanks for watching.